Welcome back as we use the most common types of antacids to learn about them and other medications. There are four major types of antacids, the magnesium hydroxide or citrate, the aluminium or sometimes called aluminum hydroxide, the sodium bicarbonate, and calcium carbonate. And those last two antacids, they're actually absorbed into the system, and as such, they have many more side effects due to that very fact. In addition, the sodium bicarbonate has a lot of sodium or salt in it, and the calcium carbonate results in the most extreme rebound hyperacidity. And what do we mean by rebound hyperacidity? Simplistically put, when you decrease the acid in the stomach with a simple antacid, the stomach realizes that it is not acidic enough and the parietal cells start releasing more acid instead of less. And that results in higher amounts of acid than before the antacid was taken. So for some very good reasons, antacids containing sodium bicarbonate or calcium carbonate are not normally the preferred antacid and I'll let you research them on your own if you'd like further information about those. Right now, we need to take a quick look at the most common antacids, the ones with the fewest side effects, which are the magnesium hydroxide and the aluminium hydroxide. All antacids work in a similar way, and let's use the magnesium hydroxide antacids as an example. The antacid goes down to the level of the stomach where the hydrogen ion, the H+, that was secreted from the parietal cells, those combine with the chloride anion to form hydrochloric acid. What happens when the antacid hits the stomach is a simple chemical reaction. The magnesium hydroxide molecule breaks apart. The magnesium grabs the chloride portion of the hydrochloric acid, while the two hydroxide molecules combine with a hydrogen molecule to form two molecules of water. That reaction is very simple. Try not to let the chemical formula make it seem more complicated. We've simply changed the magnesium hydroxide and the hydrochloric acid to two molecules of water and a molecule of magnesium chloride. And from that very fact, you would think that there's going to be no side effects, but we have already identified a few side effects in the previous lesson. In addition, the magnesium chloride is what we call an osmotically active particle. We'll get a better feel for osmosis a bit later in the chapter, but for right now, just imagine that the magnesium chloride molecule has the ability to pull water into the intestines. And if there's more fluid coming into the intestines, there'll be more water all the way through the gastrointestinal tract. So think about that. What would a person taking a magnesium antacids experience as they move their bowels? And you were correct if you said diarrhea. Magnesium antacids often cause diarrhea because they result in an osmotically active particle pulling water into the lumen of the gastrointestinal tract. Aluminium antacids start off in a very similar way, but the end result is three molecules of water and a molecule of aluminium chloride. And the remaining aluminium chloride causes constipation. And so remember that the aluminium causes constipation, the magnesium antacids cause diarrhea. And finally, there is one more effect of aluminium antacids, they actually decrease the absorption of many drugs and nutrients by binding to them. Remember when we applied our knowledge, we determined that all antacids should be taken two hours before or two hours after other medications or meals, if at all possible. And that's because the lower acidity in the stomach would decrease the absorption of some drugs, while the aluminium antacids those directly bind to some medications, so it's especially important not to take them with other medications. In effect, you would call that a drug-to-drug -drug interaction.